Computer Programming Essentials, Unit 8, Part 2. So when comparing string values, we must know that the uh, data stored at a string variable is actually an address. It's a reference to where the particular string is stored and, and not the string itself. And when we assign a new value to a string, it changes the address that is stored at that string, does not manipulate the original characters. Here's an example. Let's assume that we have a string variable a greeting and it's equal to hello. Let's further assume that that string a greeting is held at memory location 10876. Contained at 10876 is 26040, for example, the address where hello might be stored in memory. So not hello itself, but the address or reference to where hello is stored in memory. On the right hand side of this bar, let's take a look at string a greeting equals hello and then a greeting equals bonjour. What happens is we don't alter hello, we don't change hello, we create a new string object containing bonjour and it happens to be stored at address 32564 and 32564 replaces 26040 inside the memory location a greeting. So it doesn't change the string object, it creates a new one and abandons the old one. That's because strings are immutable. Immutable means that it cannot be changed. And so when we're making a comparison between strings using the equals equals operator, we are comparing that memory address and not the values, not the string itself. Instead, the string class provides some methods that we could use to compare string objects. The equals method will take a look at two strings and compare to see if they have the same contents, identical contents. If the contents are identical, it will return a true. If they are not, it will return a false. Upper and lower case characters have a different value. So an uppercase character does not equal a lowercase character. In that case, we have, if we want to treat upper and lower case as the same, we can use the equals ignore case method, and the equals ignore case method will take case differences off the table. Uppercase A will be the same as lowercase A if we're using equals ignore case. For example, let's assume we have a string variable A name and it's equal to Carmen. Further assume that we declare another string variable another name and we prompt the user to enter a uh, string. We can use a name dot equals another name to see if Carmen equals whatever the user typed in. If that is true, it will print out the contents of a name, Carmen, equals, and then the contents of another name. If that is false, it will print out Carmen does not equal, and then whatever the other name was that the user entered. The compare to method is much like the equals method in that it can be used to compare strings. But the compare to method does not return a true or a false. It returns an integer. And that integer is zero if the two strings are the same, negative if the first string is less than the second string, or positive if the first string is greater than the uh, argument string. So if we have if a word dot compare to another word less than zero, that's comparing the contents of a word and seeing if they are less than another word. Now when we say less than, we're talking about a lexicographic comparison. We will go over this in class a bit, quite a bit, but lexicographic loosely means alphabetical and it looks at uppercase comes before lowercase, so all uppercase letters are less than all lowercase letters and A is less than B is less than C is less than D and so on. But we will go over that quite a bit in class. Strings, can, you, there are two different types of strings that don't have a, a str string contents as we might traditionally think. The first is the empty string and you may have seen this earlier in this course but the empty string is just two double quotes right next to each other. There are no contents, no space between the double quotes, just two double quotes right next to each other. And that means that a string object has been created but it doesn't have any contents. So there is an address that's stored in that string variable, but the, uh, uh, the address contains no values. When we go to that address, there's nothing there. Alternatively, the null string, null is a keyword in Java, and it technically means nothing. So if we have a null string as opposed to an empty string, that means that there will not be an address stored at our string variable. 
So it will be, e it will be uh, equal to nothing, technically nothing. And that is a difference. One has a string object, but there's nothing stored there. The second does not have a string object. It just has no address inside the string variable. Some useful string methods. To uppercase will convert an entire string to uppercase. Now, remember that strings are immutable. So if we're using the to uppercase method, it doesn't change the original string. It just uh, returns the modified original string. So the original will stay the same, but it will return one that's, say, all uppercase. Or if we use the to lowercase, it will return a string that is all lowercase. The length method, again, does not modify the string. None of these methods modify the string. The length method will tell will return how many characters are contained inside that string, the total number of characters. The index of method determines a specific location of a specific character or substring um, where it starts inside the string. One thing that you need to know, in Java, arrays are zero-based. That means that the index or subscript, the first location of any array, is going to be zero. Strings are arrays of character, so the first character in a string is at location or position zero. So the index of method is going to start counting at zero. The second character will be one, the third character will be two, and so on, and return the location based on that zero base starting at zero. If index of cannot find a character substring in the current string, it returns a negative one, meaning it's not found. The replace method replaces all occurrences of some character within a string. The toString method will return an object as a string. And here we're looking at the example uh, looks at the um, wrapper class integer. Let's say we have string the string int sum int equals four, so we have an integer variable equal to four. The string equals integer dot two string sum int. So sum int will take that int four, pass it to the two string method of the integer wrapper class, which will return the four as a string. Basically, the number four with double quotes around it. Concatenation is a fancy way of, of saying put two strings together. We talked about this all the way since unit one, and it's the plus operator, and it adds two strings, but uh, concatenates two strings. So it doesn't add them, but it puts them together. Concatenates two strings. Sub substring method will extract part of a string. It takes two arguments: the start position and the end position. What you have to know about the end position is that the last character extracted will be one less than the end position. It starts at the start position and goes all the way up to but not including the end position.